Good morning, students. It's me, Ms. Sonia, and today we are back with another lesson. As you all know, that we have completed so many things about agriculture in the previous lecture. So today, I have selected human factors affecting agriculture to be discussed about. But before moving forward, hurry up, grab your notebook along with pencil and pen, and start noting the important pointers. And yes, you're already familiar with the other guidelines. I am going to discuss this topic in detail because there were multiple questions along with MCQs which were included in the past papers. So let's get started. SLO number 5.3.2, discuss how human factors affect the production of small scale and cash crop farms, cotton, rice, sugar cane, and wheat. So in this SLO, we are going to discuss about the human factors as well as the production, uh, the human factors that how the production of small scale and cash crop farms are being disturbed and how it is affecting uh, those production, how it is getting affected by the human factors. So let's move forward, starting with the human factors, the human and economic input. Input basically means that you are putting your input into something and then you're getting the result. Starting with irrigation facilities, if rainfall is not sufficient or reliable, farming can still thrive with irrigation. Even in humid regions, irrigation is used to improve yields. With the extension of irrigation facilities, crops can be grown twice or thrice a year, and the cultivable areas increases. Well, in these three points, let me tell you the summary of it. It means that for irrigation, rainfall is important. It plays a very important role because it is relying on that rainfall. If we are not having the adequate amount of rainfall, then automatically irrigation will get effective. If irrigation will get effective, then automatically what will happen? It cannot improve the yield. But if there is adequate amount of rainfall, then automatically it will improve your yields. And yes, if there is adequate amount of rainfall, then definitely you can cultivate your land. And yes, you can have the crops can be grown twice or thrice a year. Okay, starting with the next point, some vegetables and salad crops can be grown up to 10 times in a year. If the weather is according to the requirement, then definitely it will also uh, benefit the crops to be grown 10 times in a year. It means the salad crops and the vegetables. Even the desert of Sinthar and Punjab Thal have been reclaimed and made productive. Despite of the fact that these were deserts, you know that, that we cannot do vegetation in desert, but still they have been made productive. Some parts of Balochistan have also been provided with irrigation facilities, for example, Las Bela district. So you can see that the parts of Balochistan, Balochistan is also a deserted area, but now finally it is moving towards productivity and progress and establishment. So Las Bela district is also irrigated over there. Now, the other irrigation facilities, let's discuss about canal irrigation. It causes waterlogging and salinity, which have destroyed large cultivable areas in Sindh and Punjab. Due to waterlogging, it has destroyed the areas of Sindh and Punjab. Despite having one of the best canal networks in the world, there is huge wastage in irrigation process. So it means that, that the canal or the pipelines of those canals are not properly build up over there or are not properly linked with each other so obviously it creates a disturbing situation many of the canals were built during the british period they need rehabilitation and remodeling obviously if something is built centuries before then definitely you have to look forward you have to think about it and then they they need polish as well if you're not polishing something then you cannot have a healthy result or you cannot have a good result at the end. Cleaning and maintenance of canal is not done on regular basis. If we are going to clean them on regular basis, then definitely it can benefit us. But if we are not cleaning them on regular basis, then that is a negative point for us. A lot of water seeps into the ground through the unlined canals causing water wastage. So you can see that due to water seeps into the ground, it is and there are unlined canals causing water wastage it means the water is getting wasted then coming up upon the irrigation areas of pakistan are dependent upon rainfall accessibility to irrigation facilities 
at a reasonable cost is a pertinent factor. So you can see that that people and yes, the farmers and the agricultural lands are dependent upon agriculture and rainfall. If you are having adequate amount of rainfall, then definitely it can benefit us. But if you are not having that much amount of rainfall that is required, then it can result in two consequences. You can see there is a picture on the right side which is given. These all are the irrigation methods that how it is transported into the irrigation land. Okay. Now, moving towards fertilizers. All the nutrients in our food originally come from the soil. This maintains the soil fertility so the farmers can continue to grow nutritious crops and healthy crops. Well, you all know that the soil contains nutrients. When you're growing crops on the soil, then definitely it is giving you nutrients. The application of fertilizer, traditional manure or chemical fertilizers has increased output. It means that you are getting more output from both of these things. Farmers turn to fertilizers because these substances contain plant nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. So farmers have turned into fertilizers, not farmers, but they have moved their focus towards the fertilizers because they contain nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Nitrogenous fertilizers are used extensively. It means that we are util utilizing them on a larger scale. 75% of total fertilizers are used as the soil are deficient in organic matters. So you can see that that almost 75% of the soil of the total fertilizers which we are using, they are used as the soil and deficient in organic matters. It means that they are providing you with organic supplies. Now, there is also a picture which is given on the left side. You can see these are the fertilizers. This is the soil and you are growing crops. There are fertilizers in these soil roots and then they're giving it to these roots. So you can see that this is how the system works. Coming towards mechanization, mechanized agriculture is the process of using agricultural machineries to mechanize the work of agriculture, greatly increasing farm work productivity. So you can see that, that you are using machines for agricultural process. You are utilizing machines just to, you know, cultivate the lands more fastly as compared to uh, the manual force. Beside improving production efficiently, mechanization encourages large scale production and sometimes can improve the quality of farm produce. So you can see that they are improving the production e e efficiently as well as mechanization, it also encourages the large scale production. And yes, it sometimes can improve the quality of the farms and the products as well. But it had also led to a sharp decline in the number of people employed in the agriculture sector. Obviously, when you're replacing something with machineries, then you need more, not more, but a little labor force. So automatically it is resulting in unemployment. Reduce the time of production. The time of production will significantly be reduced if you have quality equipments. Automatically, when you are having quality equipments, then it will utilize less time to complete your work. For example, without tractor attachments such as harrow, plug, and seed speeders, drills, etc., you as a farmer would lose a lot of time, the time you could otherwise use to increase production. So Everything should work up to the mark. Everything should work practically. If things are working practically, then definitely you can reach faster to your destination. Now, coming towards agricultural marketing. Okay. And in this uh, over here on the left side, you can see this is basically a machine and which is replaced by the labor force. But, but to, you know, uh, to just uh, make this machine work, they need a labor over here because he'll look after all of these things. Now, coming towards agricultural marketing, this is basically how the agricultural marketing is done through banners, through standees, through advertisements. All of these factors are included in that. So it is disorganized with a lack of transport facilities and a large number of intermediaries resulting in an increase in cost and reducing output. What is happening over here is that it is basically disorganized. It does not organize up to the mark or according to the requirement of the people. So what is happening at the end that the results which we are getting, they, these are the delayed results. 
we are uh, just uh, you know for the advertisements and for the marketing we are giving more money but the output is late which we are getting now coming towards the size of farm you can see there on the left side there is a picture which is given over here and you can see there is this is another field this one is another field and this one is another field so machinery cannot be used on these farms small and fragmented holdings are difficult to supply loans cannot be obtained to develop small holdings irrigation is difficult on small and discontinuous farms experiments cannot be carried out for increasing the production now let me just give you a summary of all of these points which i mentioned over here it basically says that when we are talking about these farms so for these farms we cannot uh, take these farms on rental basis it means that we cannot take these farms on loans because there are small farms you cannot use machineries on these farms whatever you have to do you have to utilize your hands to finally complete your task then coming towards pesticides pest and insects inflicts heavy losses on crops pesticides are used to control various pests and diseases carries such as mosquitoes ticks rats and mice it is used in agriculture to control weeds insects infestations and diseases herbicides to kill or inhibit the growth of unwanted plants also known as weeds well weeds are also known as the growth of unwanted plants which are not necessarily required over there then pest basically means that if pest will attack your uh, crops then definitely it can damage your crops so what you are going to do you are going to use these pest control services just to avoid all of these things and once if the crops are damaged then automatically the profit which you are going to get uh it would be a lesser profit and on the other hand you can you cannot utilize those crops then research has shown that the use of pesticides has weakened the human immune system this happens when pesticides remain in crop which is then eaten or if farm workers come into contact with pesticides when using them the use of pesticides has opened a way for diseases like gastrointestinal uh, intestinal infectious tuberculosis etc well you can see when we are talking about pesticides then on one hand if they are saving your crops then on the other hand it is also disturbing your immune system why because you, we are utilizing chemical to spray those crops and to avoid all of these pesticides and insecticides so we are utilizing those because obviously if we are we are utilizing it for eating then those things are going on into our stomach and then it creates immune system problem then comes capital capital has been defined as that part of a person's wealth other than land which yield an income or which aid in the production of further wealth capital basically means your investment that how much money you are investing onto your product capital serves as an instrument of production anything which is used in production is known as capital then comes the labor force labor force basically means that labor is one of the most important component as a country moves from underdeveloped to developing and to developed countries so labor starts moving with them and if there are labor forces in the agricultural sectors then definitely you are having more opportunities to grow, grow farms to grow crops and to increase your farms then comes the knowledge let me just summarize uh, uh, the all of these things well according to whatever is written over here the summary is that you should have a balanced knowledge about agriculture the products cash crop and subsistence farming if you are not having knowledge then definitely it is going to be affected the assignment for today is discuss how human factors affect the production of small scale and cash crop farms cotton rice sugar cane and wheat thank you so much everyone i hope this presentation turned out to be something important and informative for all of you and i hope that all of those misconceptions which were in your mind are pretty much clear if you are having any sort of questions so you can ask me on kp or on my youtube channel inshallah we'll return back with another presentation for all of you till then take care barakallah and allah